everybody? It's your boy, DL, a.k.a. The Church Guitarist, and I came on today to give you some more tips I think that will help you playing church guitar. I'm entitling this particular series The 10 Chords Every Guitarist Needs to Play in Church. Don't miss it. I'll be right back. Let's go. All right, so what's up everybody? It's your boy DL, AKA the church guitarist here. Before I get started, I need you to do me a favor. Go up, hit the subscribe button, and then after you do that, click the bell icon so you can get all of the information that I'm throwing out here on YouTube the day it goes live, all right? I'm gonna be outlining at least 10 essential chords I think every church guitarist needs in order to play in church. What I recommend is that you just really kind of get these chords under your fingertips, all right? Because church music is going to be coming at you fast and they're going to be calling out numbers and things like that. And if you don't have these chords down, you'll fumble for most of the song because those chords are going to last a few seconds and then they're going to be off to the next one. So, I need everybody paying attention. Grab your guitar. I'm in standard tuning. Well, at least I hope I am. Today, I'm playing my brand new Gretsch Thin Line. It's the G2622, made by Gretsch. It's an incredible guitar. I really love it. I love the hardtail in the V-shape. Gretsch always has to do something kind of special. This is a part of that like Jet series, their Thin Line Jet series, but it's made for jazz. It is not completely hollow. It has a bar in the middle. I forgot what they call it, um, but it's only hollow on the ends, but it still gives great tone, a good sound, and it has a broad tone, I think it is, pickups in it you'll love it anyway playing out of my quilter 202 overdrive all right right into the system so that's what you're hearing that's what you're hearing right now all right so here's the 10 chords i don't know why i put up five fingers but it's the 10 it's the 10 chords every gospel guitarist needs in his arsenal you ready Let's go. Chord number one, chord number one is you want to be able to take whatever key they're playing in and make it into a triad. I usually play the top three strings. So that's, that is a B flat triad, which means you can make it A flat, you can make it, you can make it D. B flat. Really, the fingering for this is very, very simple. You ready? It's your middle finger is on string number three in the seventh fret, and then your pointer is barring the last three strings, but you're only going to hear uh, strings two and strings one. That's a B flat triad. So a lot of times you could just run church music. You can run church music like that with just that and that accent. So the accent, which is chord number two, is going to be is going to be an E flat major, except for don't play the E flat as the root. You just play strings four, three, and two. I would practice that right there. So I would 
put on a metronome and play that. Okay, also, chord number three. It's used here on the five. So if we're in B flat, this is a seven sharp nine chord. In the key structure, it is going to be F7 sharp nine. I'll spell that out for you. Your middle finger is going to be on the eighth fret of the fifth string. Your pointer is going to be on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Your ring finger is going to be on the eighth fret of the third string. And your pinky is going to be on the ninth fret of the second string. Again, your middle finger is going to be on the eighth fret, fifth string. Pointer finger is going to be on the seventh fret, fourth string. Ring finger, 8th fret, 3rd string. Pinky, 9th fret, 2nd string. That is a 7 sharp 9. We use it like in a minor connotation. Because a the major 5 of B they have different sounds. That's the five of B flat as well. So that's F7 sharp nine. Let's do a recap. B flat major triad, the top three strings. Then you're gonna do an E major, uh, E flat major triad without the root, without the E at the root. Just starting on strings four, three, and two. That's the accent. Chord number three is that F7 sharp nine. Here's the favorite chord out of everybody. Chord number four. Since we're still in B flat, we're on the fourth interval of that scale. It's going to be a minor. It's going to be an E flat six nine chord, an E flat nine chord. I'll spell it out for you. Your middle finger is going to be on fret six on the fifth string pointer is going to be on fret five on the fourth string and then your ring finger is going to bar strings three two and one in the sixth fret it is important that you you hear that note from the pointer that's without the pointer right pointer brings that real melodic minor in. This chord could be used as the one if you were playing per se in E flat. It could be the one. But right now, since we're in B flat, it's the four. It's the real churchy chord. That's the seven sharp nine. Back to the just major with the accent. B flat major. Seven sharp nine. B flat major. Let's do it slower. One, two, three. Seven sharp nine, major B flat. Seven sharp nine, go. The four. And all I'm doing is sliding that same shape up fret back. See that? Right now, we only got three chords. One, well, four.
And what I would do as a practice, I would go through those chords. I would do that in different patterns. So you can get ready because church music is going to come at you hot and fast. All right. Here we go. That's chord number four. You can also slide it back. You can slide it back two frets and then use your pinky. So if you slide your E flat nine back two frets, it's a D flat nine or a D flat now, maybe 11. Because you put your pinky up two frets. See how that works? Go major to the four. Four. Slide it back two frets to the five. Now that F7 sharp nine is the five. Okay, so one. Slide it back to the frets, to the five. One. Let's do it slower. One, two, three, and. That's the major, to the four. Slide it down to the frets. as you want. Here's chord number six. This is a seven flat five chord. I use it in the one. Or I use it as the one. Literally, let me spell that out for you. It looks like a diminished chord that would be rooted on the fourth string, except for it's rooted on the fifth string. My pointer is on the fifth fret of the fifth string. My middle finger is on the fifth fret of the third string. My ring finger is on the sixth fret of the fourth string. And my pinky is on the sixth fret on string number two. So I substitute that for the one. That's still the one. Four. Back to the one. You can't, you could, you could not only just slide it forward, you can slide it backward. I love that sound. And I just went up two frets and I slid it back, fret by fret. That is literally a D7 flat five. number six. Here's chord number seven that I also can use for the one. It's a B9, it's a B flat nine sus. Sometimes I call it the Christmas tree chord. Literally my thumb is holding down the B flat on the sixth string, right? On the sixth fret. My ring finger is in the sixth fret on the fourth string. My middle finger is in the fifth fret of the third string. My pointer is in the fourth fret of the second string. And my pinky 
is back on B flat on the first string on the sixth fret. And then you drop your pointer down one fret. Half a semitone, right? And a semitone down. Semitone down. And that's the one. Let me show you how it works. So if we're playing some church music. to me. You can substitute the, that B flat 9 sus or that D7 flat 5 for the 1. Here's what I call the climb. I would give them individual chords, but we won't do that. Your first chord is going to be it's going to be a B flat major, except for your pointer is just going to grab strings 4, 3, and 2 on the 3rd fret. And then you're going to make an E flat triad, E flat major triad. And literally that is ring fingers on fret number five on the four string. Your pointer is on fret number three on the third string. And then your middle finger is on fret number four of the second string. And what I did for comfort was I left my pointer barred across fret number three. And I put my ring finger and my middle finger down. If you did the whole, if you fretted everything from strings five to string one, you'd have a C minor seven. But because we're not using the C, it becomes an E. So you're gonna go, this is the first move of the climb, just the barring of frets, of fret three, strings four, three, and two. Then that E flat chord. And that is, it would be a diminished chord, except for you're not gonna use the root. So your pointer never moved, it's still fretted on fret three. is still on fret number five on string number four and then your pinky comes in on fret number five string number two right that's part of the climb and then you move everything up now it looks complicated, but you only hear three strings. And I'll spell that out for you. Your ring finger or your, yep, your ring finger is on fret number six of the fourth string. Your middle finger is on fret number five of the third string. And your pinky is on fret number six of the second string. That's for the key of B flat. You hear that? So that would be that would be three, four, four and a half, five. If the bass, if the musician is calling out numbers. B flat. And you're going. Sometimes I would go. I would 
would do that too, but I'll explain that in a later video. So three, four, four and a half, five. That's the climb. And then it's the major shape and the chromatic walk up to B flat from G. So you would do. See how I use that the nine sus chord? Or that's that seven flat five. Okay. So let's put most of the chords together that we have. I'm gonna call them by numbers, and then when we get ready to do the climb, I'll call it the climb. That's the whole climb, okay? So let's start from the top. Let me slow down. One, two, three, go. It's just the one. One. To the four. seven or eight chords so far let's take it a little bit faster one two one two three one and I'm done so this is a turnaround some songs are not just straight ahead so <coughs> sometimes you have a turnaround this is an A minor 11 some songs you'll need not just a, a minor five but you'll need a major five and so this is really it's still I think it's a sus two let me explain it so this is the five just like the F seven sharp nine I think it's an F9 uh, sus2, I think it is. Let me spell it out for you. Middle finger on the 8th fret on the 5th string. You're going to skip string number 4. So your ring finger is going to be on the 8th fret of the 3rd string. Your pinky is going to be on the 8th fret of the 2nd string. And your pointer is going to be on the 6th fret of the 1st string. So that's a major, that's a major turnaround. Five. Any, any, 
any way you'd like to use that is fine. So that's another turnaround. God is a good God. Yes, he is, right? Okay, so you got that major turn So how about if you have this is a minor, an A minor 11 to a D7 sharp 9 already know that F7 sharp 9 is the same shape. And that A minor 11 is the same shape as that F9 sus 2, I think it is. Except for it's rooted in the 6th string. On A. I'll spell it out for you. Your, your middle finger is on the 5th fret, the 6th string. Your ring finger is on the 5th fret of the 4th string. Your pinky is on the 5th fret of the 3rd string. And your pointer is on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string. And then you do the D7 sharp 9. Okay, show you how it fits. a few chords I'm just gonna work through some of these chords and play I'm glad you guys were here to join me for the 10 or so chords that every guitarist needs in order to play I'm your boy DL aka the church guitarist I'll see you soon after quarantine I look terrible <laughs>